I was really hoping there'd be a magnificent bubble ending to this, as there had been to the three great recent experiences, which were the housing bust, 2000 tech bust, and Japan. Mm -hmm. They were all classic. They ended with euphoria and, and a rapidly accelerating stock market. They're easy. You know they'll be followed by an abject decline. This one, I was hoping that would happen, doesn't look like it will, and therefore you're going to have a decline of a different nature. Mm -hmm. I wrote a paper three years ago called Not With a Bang But a Whimper, mm -hmm. in which I suggested that this, the trend line PE that used to be 15 and has jumped for 20 years to 20 or 21, which is a, a lot higher, uh, is probably not going to go back the way the value managers would love it to mm -hmm. in a hurry. It may move back slowly and steadily. And I think it will move back perhaps two thirds of the way, but it will take 20 years, not the usual five, six or seven years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this will be limping along three steps down, two steps back. It's not a typical experience, but it, it looks increasingly likely to me. And when we see that the Fed has pivoted and, and uh, become, relatively speaking, more easy once again, and the ECB has done that uh, too today, does yes. that make you think that U.S. equities are attractive for the next couple of years again? No, I, I'm afraid not. The, you can't get blood out of a stone there at these prices. Even the, the bears, the bulls, and everyone in between at GMO agree that over a long horizon, like 20 years, U.S. market will be delivering 2 or 3 percent real. Mm -hmm. And for the last 100 years, we're used to it delivering uh, perhaps 6 percent real. So this is a fairly painful, it's not the end of the world, but it's going to break a lot of hearts uh, when we're right. Mm -hmm. 3 percent a year is going to seem terribly disappointing. Now, if you stay away from the U.S., which I absolutely would, uh, in emerging markets, I suspect you can do even better than six, maybe seven or eight if you tilt it towards value. Your five or six year forecast is for, for actual declines in U.S. equities. Is that right? I, I would think uh, declines are more likely than the other. And if the market is up, it's highly unlikely to be up a lot. And I think that's the key thought. And, and the main reason what va valuations of those stocks? Valuations and the fact that the economic cycle will clearly not be in our favor. The reason we've done so well for 10 years is we had an enormous pool of unemployed. Uh, this is not trend line growth. This is taking 1% a year almost out of the unemployed pool and sticking it into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And that has boosted our apparent growth rate by almost a point a year. This economy does not have a trend line growth of 2.8 or 2.5. It has a trend line growth of about 1.5. And we've been boosting it on a cyclical basis. And people, if you keep anything up for 10 years in the stock market, people think it's a trend line, but it mm -hmm. isn't. And so on that topic of the economy rather than the markets in, in the U.S., uh, do you fear a recession? Are there any signs you see that suggest one is in, in, uh, on the horizon in the next year or so? I think uh, people have been worried about recessions for two or three years. I've taken the view that there was enough labor hiding in the participation rate. Mm -hmm. We had frightened people away out of the workforce, but on, on, the, on the numbers, they were there lurking around somewhere. And in the last two or three years, we have quite effectively drawn back about one and a half percent. Mm -hmm. People who were dismayed and weren't bothering now have registered and, and, and show up in the employed or the unemployed. And uh, that game may still have a point and a half left. And a point and a half could keep us going for another couple of years. Mm -hmm. Or it could stop tomorrow. But the point is, what we cannot do is we cannot grow at the speed we've grown for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm because the labor pool is simply not available and, and the underlying productivity has not been there for a long time. And what about the global growth outlook? Clearly fears about that had surfaced in the second half of last year. Do you feel like they're adequately priced in now or, or is well, there... One of my problems is I, I always like to think longer term apparently than anybody else, but... Uh, which and, can and be it inc served you very well, Jeremy. Which can be inconvenient. But the growth rate of the population of the developed world is, is, has gone to hell and, and, and the population eventually will start to decline in the next couple of decades everywhere in the developed world. Uh, you need 2.1% fertility rate to replace and 
The U.S. just announced 1.76, 15% below that. It's below in every developed country. This really has an effect on, on the top line numbers. Mm -hmm. And there's no way around that. It's not going to change ever, I, I would guess. So we have uh, lower workforce growth. We have an aging population, which doesn't help. And the growth rate of the, of the whole developed world is settling down. Uh, maybe one and a half in the U.S., maybe one in Europe. Uh, much lower than people seem to get their brain around. And outside Europe, I think the population growth is, I am certain the population growth rate is also slowing. And uh, so generally speaking, we can look at a world where the secular growth is getting slower. Mm -hmm. That's the long-term picture. Over the next two or three years, uh, I suppose the honest statement is your guess is as good as mine. Fair enough. And, and on, let's dive into Europe a, a little bit more. As, as we were discussing, the ECB has downgraded its growth forecasts uh, from 1.7 to 1.1 percent. Is there a bigger problem bubbling under the surface there? Could they face another existential crisis like they did in 2010 to 12 uh, anytime soon? The downgrading, by the way, is getting awfully close to what I think is their long term growth rate, mm -hmm. about one. No one else believes that, but I'm pretty confident they will eventually. So uh, they're going to have to learn to live with a low growth rate. They have, of course, other problems of immigration, which has been rattling the cage mm -hmm. uh, so uh, viciously for the last three or four years politically. And that is uh, highly unlikely to go away. The, Africa is the only place on the planet where the growth rate in population is still uh, uh, prodigious. And uh, the UN says they're going to produce an extra three billion people. Mm -hmm. um, and the rest of the world will be declining. Uh, now, there won't be three billion extra Africans, but there may well be one, one and a half or two billion. And there will be immigration waves that make the recent experience look trivial. And that's going to stress out the European politics. And I think that will be the biggest factor. And as they get stressed out, it, it produces opportunities for the big players, Russia, China, to misbehave or behave, mm -hmm. but, it, but it increases uncertainty.